everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy, welcome back everyone. All right, so today we're talking about our top 10 themeless games or Pace It On Themes, which is what it was called four years ago when we did it. I just changed the name of it. Mm -hmm. To be clear, I'm not talking about games that are clearly abstract games. Oh. <laughs> Whatever, we talked about this. <laughs> so Go won't be on the list. I wouldn't hate the list anyway because I hate Go. These are games in which I could not, there is a theme, I don't get the theme at all, like the theme doesn't do anything for me, but I still like the game. The theme could be anything is the idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I like a lot of these themes. Now I'm thinking about this going to come back and bite me. I mean, me. I already did the list, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> no, no, I'm thinking about my <laughs> list, so. Yeah, but, so. There's going to be a couple games, and at the end, you guys, because this is live, you can ask us, why did you put this game? And I'll say, well, I felt a little bit of theming in this part, so therefore it didn't make my list. Basically, what it is, it is I made a list of like 22 or so, and then I went through them, and I was like, okay, could this game be about goats? If yes, it's the candidate. I can't or, tell if that's true or, or not. Or donkeys. Did you already do the goats thing? Or donkeys' butts. Why? <laughs> I feel like we're no, going back to our pre-show conversation. I'm All joking. right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know. You don't want to know. All right. So I made my list at home. I really worked hard to not miss four. So it's a trick, okay? And uh, this is something I've learned from from many years of training. Uh, if you made a mistake and realize something should have been on your list, don't say it out loud. <laughs> All this right. It's true. However, since I did make my list at home, I left my list at home. So I'm just going to look up at the screen and see what my picks were. You've been pretty messed up again? <laughs> How is this possible? No. I, I, I realized before I was like, ah, let's see if I can pull this off. It's fine. Whatever. So are we ready? Let's do it. <laughs> Here we go. Let's hit it. Number 10. All right. My number 10. Why? Is this, are we in Cajun territory? What's going on? I don't know what's Cajun happening. Cajun territory? Oh, mon ami. Anyway, uh, my number 10 is a game that is a social deduction game. And really, this just kind of... I picked this one as kind of a placeholder. And you guys do this every once in a while. Not all the time. But you do it as a placeholder for almost any social deduction game that's out there. And I use the word almost and any specifically because I know there are probably exceptions. Deception, murder, Hong Kong is thematic. Negative. It's not thematic? It is thematic. But that's not the game I'm saying. No, I'm saying that one's thematic. Spyfall, correct. That's one of, that's one of the exceptions to the rules. Spyfall, super thematic. I have seen many spies <laughs> show up at a location and go... I don't know where I, I am. I have no idea where I am. <laughs> but I'm going to pretend. <laughs> this one's hilariously. When you really stop and think about the theme, you're all talking about where you are. Is it supposed to be actually, oh, maybe it's supposed to be a blind spy. <laughs> What's that? That's the worst. That's why he's got sunglasses on. Yeah, but oh. are they all blind? No. Because if it was a blind spy, I'd be like, he's a spy. <laughs> <laughs> the poll gave it away. Um, hmm. What? what no, I'm doing? kidding. I'm joking. Go. <laughs> Spyfall is a great game, but it could literally be about anything you could possibly Does it pass the goat think test? about. Yes, it could be. Are we in a place that has a goat or not? Okay, yes. that's, that's pretty weird, but it is. This is almost anti-theme. It's almost, almost like the theme. And that's a different list. It definitely has a nah, pasted on theme, though. I mean, it's the spy trying to figure out where he is without anybody else knowing that he's the oh, spy. Oh, sure. This is, a good, this is a really good choice. I didn't. This one didn't even occur it, to me. It could, it could be anything, and, and that's why I like it. It's a really good game, really fun game, and yes. very enjoyable, but the theme could be almost literally anything. All right. Yeah, it's good. My like number it. 10, Spyfall. Yeah, that is a good pick. All right, my uh, number 10, I actually organized mine chronologically. Um, because Studying I, from old to new? Old to new. I went from my least favorite to my, my favorite. I really I, like all of these games, so I just old to new. If, if two of them were on the same year, then I did that, but whatever. All right, so the first one's from 2007, and this is a game called Biblios. 
Biblios. It's about a library. It's about monks, I think, saving books or transcribing books in order to, you know, uh, uh, save their contents. But it could certainly be about goats. You're shearing goats. And then you're auctioning their wool. And you use keep it, the, keep it up. No, I can't. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just pretty pictures, you know, and numbers, and the dice are actually not rolled in this game. You, they, they're trackers. Um, it's a neat card game. I like it a lot. It's a little bit like For Sale, which is a game in two stages. The first stage, sort of a draft. Second stage, an auction part. <laughs> You're going to be using the cards you drafted from the first part, money or you know, uh, knowledge in different areas, whatever to bid on some more cards. And I've always enjoyed it. I've always thought it's a really solid filler. But this theme, not only is it a, a pasted-on theme, they went and found a really boring one, too. Biblios, man. It's like... Ah, I like the book theme. It's like the if epitome it was there. Of, of lack of action. In the game, you are sitting, writing. Some of us like to sit and write. I like to sit. Disgusting. I don't like writing, though. Or reading. Reading's terrifying. Uh, reading hurts my eyes. My brain. Right. My number 10 is Biblios. My number 10 is a game that I really enjoy. I played it several times over the past decade. Um, it's in my top 200, probably. Okay. Uh, and it is... Uh, <laughs> we should probably put it on the screen. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> this is so good. Dominaire, that's right. Oh, this is so oh, good. Oh, yeah. These guys are having a blast over there. I love this. I love All this. Right, so I Dominic think Kenny is the wrong person to be running the PowerPoint. Kenny's going to troll you so much. He's going to troll you every single time. Dominic is, <laughs> is a game that uh, was actually broadcasted that it would be thematic. This came out in the Tempest uh, world from oh, gosh, yeah. AEG. So they said, we're going to make these, these series of games. They're all in the same world. And the first one's going to be about a queen. And then this queen is going to abdicate in a second one. And you're going to follow this story. And they then proceeded to make these as generic as possible. Love Letter, for example, is the third one in this series. And Love Letter could serious, has been, or was different, has yeah. been re-themed like 20 times. There's Batman Love Letter for crying out loud. But anyway, Dominaire, <laughs> Dominaire, there's a bunch of people that you have. I have no idea why. You're controlling districts in the city. I have no idea why. And it's supposed to be this whole guild war thing going on. Yeah. Whatever. It could be anything. This is an interesting game, though, that hardly anyone plays anymore. I had a Dice Tower library, and I'm pretty sure it hasn't been checked out since I put it in. But I <laughs> really like ago. this game. Dominaire, uh, I like the area control. I like how you play a card. And the character's power that they have will change based on how late in the game you play them. Okay. Or how early they can their powers can happen multiple times. I've never played it. That sounds like Va Viceroy, where depending on how high up the pyramid you play It's a little them. different. So, like, if I play this character, and then each round the character's powers go off, so the earlier you play some characters, the more You'll time their more stuff will it. happen. But, um, yeah. So I, but I, I really like it. But the characters, yeah, there's some theming, I guess, in the characters. I felt nothing. I felt that cover... Doesn't actually look that bad. Like it's a little interesting. Maybe there's something about to go on there. That lady's about to get off that boat. That guy's pointing at that building, saying it's about to be demolished. And um, I'm making all that up because I don't remember anything about the theme. It's better than Biblios. So is the E in Viceroy pronounced? What? You said Viceroy. Do, have I been pronouncing that, or is that is it Viceroy? Is it Viceroy or Viceroy? I think you say it, but it's quick usually. Really? I say Viceroy. Well, I'm glad you asked me, pronunciation king. So the way you say well, things the are. Well, going to tell us. I'm maybe we should go to number same. nine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> number nine. It's you. My number nine. I know it's me. Sure. My number nine has an exclamation point. That's mark when you know it could be anything. In the title, and uh, it is called Revolution. Revolution is a um, highly <laughs> thematic That's a good pick, man. game, That's a good pick. Um, but it, it's very fun for me. I enjoy it a lot. There's a lot of uh, cool bidding that going, goes on during the thing as you bid for the control of the different, you know, the magistrate and the, the sea captain and all those other guys, and those are not the right names, but you get the idea. You're, you're, you're trying to gain control over uh, by bribing these different officials in the city so that you can gain control over their 
pockets of the city, and you're going to get points awarded for how much control you have over these different areas in the game. And yeah, it, it's it's largely just an area control game that could literally be anything, um, because the theme works okay, I guess, uh, and it and makes sense that you're bribing different officials throughout with you know uh, blackmail and physical force or money and that all works fine but it could literally be about anything and uh, it's a really fun game I enjoy it. it's probably one of the it's probably my favorite Steve Jackson game as a matter of fact um, I don't think that Steve Jackson makes anything else that I like they made better Royals than this or Port Royal Port Royal <clears throat> but so the internet good news the internet agrees with you uh, it's viceroy uh, bad news is I disagree with this pick slightly. Oh, why is that? Well, okay, first of all, I think it's weird. There's like four revolutions. I'm trying to have the best revolution. That's kind of weird. But I do like the blackmail force. Like, I'm trying to blackmail this guy, and he's like, I, I will kill you if you don't do this. And the guy's like, well, look, I know you have those pictures of me, but I'm sorry. He threatened <laughs> to kill me. The, the fact that force beats blackmail beats money, I like that. Yeah. That was thematically, and these people can't be forced. Like, the, you, you can't use force against the general because he's in charge of the army. Who cares? Right. Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, but yeah, the, the, the multiple revolutions going at the same time. <laughs> I guess I don't remember the multiple revolutions. Thing. No, each player is making their own revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You want your revolution to be the one to succeed. Yeah. Got it. That's pretty okay. much what it is. It's a terrible lad to live in. You're like, you're know, like, like join the revolution. Fun. Join mine. <laughs> like, ah. I rebel. I'm still, I'm still thinking. I haven't decided which, which revolution to join yet. I guess I'm I shopping around. I guess I wasn't thinking on that level. Uh, as, I mean, that one me mechanism is thematic, I would imagine. Well, it is. But um, I don't know. I, I think you could still use those three things in any setting. Sheep. Sheep. Force trying, the sheep. You're trying Black to get more the sheep. sheep. You're trying to get more Bribe sheep the sheep. Your... Yeah, I'm going to stop here because I don't see this going down any gun a good path. <laughs> Your turn. Oh. oh, that's my number nine, Revolution. My number nine is from 2008, and this is a game called Nefertiti. Ooh, watch all language. <laughs> Nefertiti is a bidding game. Well, you're giving presents to her, right? You're giving presents, right. The idea is you're trying to Christmas buy her. You're game. buying her presents, and you're going to all of these different markets oh, in which like you are bidding on the different markets in very geometric ways. The bidding in this game is about as euro as it gets. It's like, in this one, you put your token out. You always put a token out on a, on a bid, and you're going to buy one of the gifts in that area to give to her. But it's like, oh, well, in this market, every, as soon as there is a bid per level of this shape, then the market closes. <laughs> oh, and in this one, uh, as soon as uh, three player pieces form a tic-tac-toe line, the market closes. That's the kind of and gifts like, I want. That has nothing to do with the gifts. So it's just like a rules Christmas for game. It's a weird thing. It could have been absolutely anything. It makes for pretty pictures, yeah. But um, this is one of those Euro games where they must have just thrown a dart at a board <laughs> to pick a year and a Egyptian setting. Theme. You know, it's like, oh look, um, yeah, Nefertiti. It is that time period. Those characters go with that. I like it. Like I said, um, unfortunately, it only plays three or four, so it is a really narrow uh, range of players. Definitely not the kind of game that would get made today. You don't publish a game that plays just three or four these days. Yeah, well, if you do, it, it comes with an expansion. It has a solitaire mode, right. and then you know you, the five and the the four, the five and six player module and stuff. But I really enjoy it. So Nefertiti, my number nine that pick. Font makes it look like. Nefer CC's like the pizza. Ooh, that's delicious, man. Nefer They made a CC's. You have to bid on the game. slices, though. <laughs> <laughs> to bid on the slices. <laughs> yeah, you go and then there's a pepperoni pizza, and you say, "Okay, I'm, I'm willing to buy two of these." But then somebody else comes along and says, "I also wanted two, but I'll pay more for those two slices." Our top tens found some useful information. My number nine is a game that came out in the 21st century. Um, at some point, no, for sure. After uh, Q pushes the, you button. know, when I first played this game, I was really taken back with how much I enjoyed it. Kenny, push the button. But it doesn't have a theme. Push <laughs> the button, on, Kenny. Oh, I can see it. Oh, this one actually came out this year. <laughs> um, so, oh boy. You know what? Since the name is on the screen, no need for me to say it. 
Teotihuacan. Sam says it. Great. That is my number nine. Uh, this one is about building a, an Aztec temple, and that is the smidgen of theme that's in the game is the you can shape. actually see the shape of the temple. Matching tiles underneath, matching colors, moving dice around the board, paying based on color. None of this has any thematic sense to it at all, but it's great. I love this game. Mechanically, it's really sound. Yeah. It scales really well. I'm just, uh, yeah, whatever. There's no Good theme in bit. here. Although that cover looks incredible. You're like, ah! And you do get to see, like, the building of the temple. So I guess that's why it... I'm guessing uh, that the symbols on the outside of the pyramid have washed away with time. That's probably what it is. You know. That's a good explanation, actually. Right? Hmm. They used to have all those little shapes, and, like, the builders would be building the pyramid and be like, No! Move that one one over. There you go. Those two match. <laughs> yeah, but how is it like I show up to work? I'm here to work. There's already three people from other groups here. I didn't bring enough food for everybody. I'm out. <laughs> God, I got it. You better be able to feed everyone. Did you bring enough food for the whole class? No. It's, it's, it, that one's Get a, out. That's a really good pick. I would have put it on my... If I liked that as much as you liked it, I could definitely see myself putting on the list. Yeah. That's a good one. All right. What's, what, what's it called again? Taylor. What's it called again? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, the, the City of the Gods. Correct. Number eight. <laughs> All right, my number uh, eight. My number eight currently has uh, a theme, a, a Norse theme wrapped around it, where uh, you have uh, Loki going against Thor. Uh, with their two different sides. It's a two-player game called Thunder and Lightning. Mm. Now, uh, this one actually two uh, machine guns. already has uh, multiple, well, at least two different themes that have been Is that like one it. way to guarantee yourself on this list? If there's two different versions, it's automatically... Well, if you like the game, I, I imagine. I mean, you know, I, 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 these are games that I actually enjoy. I didn't, you know, just put years on them. Correct. <laughs> Um, Thunder and Lightning is a, a uh, I, I think it looks a lot better. The other one was uh, Roman themed. I can't remember the two. It was Zeus. Or Heron. Oh, Heron's. Oh, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. Uh, Caesar and Cleopatra, but they that went wasn't for the same no, thing. not Caesar and Cleopatra. Yeah, is a no, very no. different game, yeah, yeah. which no, hasn't no, been Heron's reprinted Zeus, for some correct. odd reason. <laughs> but I, I just I, I really think that this is a good game, and I like the Norse theme uh, better than the Greek mythology theme. I guess maybe yeah. that's a little bit further away than. Not as far away, rather, in theme, thematic inclusion as I It could have definitely thought. been anything where there was opposition and betrayal. Well, yeah, two and opposing mystery. sides. Two opposing anything. sides. Anything. I um, did like that Caesar Pandora was that or, you know, thing that know. messed everything over. I thought that was interesting. And I did like the... Are they Pegasuses or are they ravens in this game? They're now? ravens in this one. Yeah. Actually, the raven... Yeah, but like the you said... The original theme was slightly better. I think the original theme was a better... It was theme, a slightly better but this fit. This is way prettier, this is prettier and it's a right? better game. And has text on the cards before you had to like, decipher all this stuff. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> oh, it has like any card you wanted to play, you'd be like, what's that do? Yeah, right. Oh. But I enjoy the game a lot. It's a great two player game, and there's a lot of, um, a lot of difficult choices to make throughout the course of the game. Do I keep this card in my hand, hoping that my, person, my opponent doesn't search through my hand, or do I put it down on the ground and hoping that uh, that card doesn't get smacked on that column? Uh, I, I really enjoy it. My number eight, Thunder and Lightning. That's good. What, what, what theme would you like to see on that, Tom? Like a hats versus ties or something. Oh, man. Right? You're trying to find a, a hidden hat. <laughs> cats a tri, versus, a tri cats versus dogs. Okay. Dice has put a new policy. No more drinking at lunchtime. Oh, man. That's too bad. My no number eight pick is from the year 2012. And it is a game called Targi, also a two-player game. Uh, and in Targi, you are exploring the desert or something, finding... You're sending people out in a grid. And so, if you work in the same row, I can't work there. Correct. So if I'm out in the desert looking through it for a tree or possibly a salt... Uh, uh, maybe... Uh, are looking to be assaulted? Uh, no. That's what I was thinking, looking too. Looking for salt. Don't be looking for assault. <laughs> and uh, you're standing in the same line as if you look down and you're like, oh, oh I got to move over a little bit. <laughs> it, it's, it's extremely abstracted. 
It works. Ex- it works well, oh, right? Such it's a, a good great game. two-player game. One of my absolute favorite two-player games when I won something that feels a little meatier than the usual card game. Uh, this is worker placement, set collections, got some special powers going on. Great game. This is extremely easy to retheme. This could be just about anything, and it would work. It's a few pictures and some special effects. They're not even particularly thematic to what's going on in the game. The the effects. So. This was a shoe in for the list. As soon as I came across this one, I was like, oh, pfft, Targi, wonderful. Glad it's back in print. But it could have been anything at all. It could have been uh, the one he just talked about, uh, Thunder and Lightning. Actually, that might work. Like Loki. Yeah, maybe. You're Loki. I'm Thor. Why do I have to be Loki? Because you're more mischievous. <laughs> all right. All right, that's my number eight, Targi. Now, my number eight, uh, the theme seems to come out of the cover, but actually, mechanisms-wise, it's a really fun game. Uh, This is the best game ever. (laughs) (laughs) Every time. Uh, Oh, it's out the plata. That's right. Wow, yeah, the theme theme really pops. It's a weaving game. (laughs) My goodness. In it, you are weaving. Okay, I could have probably put Orleans. This actually could be sheep, I guess. I could have put Orleans on this list, but Alta Plata. Maybe you did. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> I know what the game did. <laughs> I know the list. I just don't remember the order or anything else. Uh, Orleans could have been on the list, but Ulta Plata was like, oh, you thought there wasn't much theme in Orleans? Well, up that ante. Okay. I mean, you are moving around in here just trading resources for resources. <laughs> Sounds good. Based on different combinations on your sheet and then storing them in your storehouse. And What do the combinations represent? Well... They represent your life and other philosophical things. Oh, my. Can you have a llama in this game? Yeah, that's a starting player piece, that huge llama. No, but can you, like, own one, train it? Isn't that Uh, an alpaca? I think llama, yeah, whatever. Llama, alpaca, they're the same thing. It's an alpaca, right? It's not a llama. Who cares? I don't, I... Whatever. Oh, actually, I should say who cares. Somebody. Yeah, you're wrong. Somebody out there cares. Somebody does. The camel on the cover, can you own it? (laughs) (laughs) No, it's a horse. But anyway, uh, no, you get these resources and you trade them in. And look, the game is really good, but it means nothing. Like when I'm playing this game, there is like not even a whisper of, ooh, uh, I'm, I'm. I can feel the, the dirt in my face and the. You can feel air. dirt in your face. You're playing a bad game. All right, so Alta Plot on my number eight. And no, no, Orleans is not on my list. I remember making the list. I don't know. Goodness. Number seven. <laughs> okay. My number seven is a game where you are putting together a park in which people can come view bears. Bears. <gasps> Baron Park. What? Is a non thematic game. You are literally just putting shapes been together a goat park. to make different things come together it could be that's true but i add the theme in my head yeah but it, it... people die in my park every day <laughs> no <laughs> what kind of park what? it's a bear park it's a what bear kind of park? park what do you think bears eat i would go to a bear park Humans? But that's a lie because we have a monkey park like 15 minutes from there and i've never it. gone I to just it. drove by it the other day I've never, i didn't even know where it was and i happened to drive by the it other costs day. like 35 bucks a person there's that's monkeys a, in there I though looked, right i looked into how much it costs to go there and i was like nope don't need to go. I'd see go by thirty-five dollars for the person. For, yeah, per but, person. How, but how much for the monkeys? You want to? I don't want to go look I at people. Don't I want to look kids. at monkeys. <laughs> oh my goodness! Anyway, yeah. Baron Park <laughs> uh, could be barely a park. Monkey Park. It could. Be, I would buy that. It could be amusement park. It could be anything. Uh, cityscapes. Llama Park. It could be. Uh, just landscapes. It could be anything. It's still fun, and I like the theme, but it, it could be any any theme that you could possibly think of that is going to lead you towards scoring points for having, you know, different kinds of things put together. Someone in the comments said that picture clearly shows that that woman just slapped that bear. I know, because the bear's like, <laughs> lady, you do that again. It does kind of look like that, doesn't it? <laughs> And we're going to have some issues. 
Wow, All right. I've never noticed that before. Now I can't unsee that. Oh, <laughs> no, <man. right? laughs> My number seven yeah. is Baron Park. I guess I gotta trade it away now. All right, my number seven is a game that both Sam and myself enjoy. Uh-oh. It's a wonderful game about the Roman. <laughs> we can't even. It's Rise of Augustus. Oh, gee whiz. Yeah. Rise oh, of Augustus yeah. is. Uh, I'm pretty sure that when there was wars, they pick out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Chariot! <laughs> oh, I have one of those. <laughs> Sword! <laughs> yeah, almost done here, lining these things up. <laughs> we almost conquered Phoenicia. Yep. Now anything you want! Oh, fantastic. <laughs> gamer, Flag. Gamer bingo. Bingo! Um, again, I, there's definitely a, a, a pattern here that I'm seeing, and that is that these games are, well, they're obviously good because they ended up on our lists, but oftentimes they're really pretty. Yeah. You know, they are oftentimes games that look good, and so you don't, you know, this idea of, wow... Who picked this theme doesn't even cross your mind because it's like, okay, well, whatever. Yeah, it's pasted on, but let's dig in because it's a good game. Well, Revolution doesn't really look that great, but... Revolution... Yeah, no, that's true. Revolution it's kind of a product of its time, too. It's, it's like colorful, but it years. doesn't look great. Yeah. yeah. But um, this one looks great. I actually got to play it on the uh, cruise not very long ago. Had a great time. Taught it. Enjoyed it a lot. I, I still think it holds up really well. But yes, it, it is absolutely anything you want it to be. Um, it, it's basically bingo with a few extra rules. Yeah. Bingo has no theme. Right. It could be that. Yep. Um, and I don't know what I would change it to, but alpacas would be good. Alpacas. Like foot. Foot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need three more of those. Ear. All right, oh, I like yeah. this one. That's a good All right. pick. Um, Rise of Augustus, mine number seven from 2013. My number seven is a game I've reviewed. Uh, really? Are you sure? <laughs> it's not sure. No. no, I am sure. I I review a lot of games. Maybe not this one. <laughs> but I have reviewed this one. So what's your uh, favorite player count? Probably with four. One of the things that that really the company is what really makes this game. The publisher. They're uh-huh. one of my favorite publishers, and the game is um, Royals. That's right. Wow! Wow! <laughs> nice. Woo! That Worked was... out okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Toot your own horn much? Yeah. Hey, it doesn't matter. He said the company, the company, that's kind of, you know, Eric A. Wonders, but also your involvement. Yes, and, and and that should be taken into account. But this is the only Dice Tower Essentials, because I think, for example, Sheriff of Nottingham, super thematic, and Onitama's obviously an abstract. Sure, This sure. one, yes. the Royals, you are placing... It used to be called Paupers. You are spending cards <laughs> to take control of different tiles throughout Europe Paul and different groups, and the theme means... Pretty much nothing. But it's Europe. It, yeah, even that doesn't mean anything. It's red, blue, green. You are trying to get kings and princesses and counts and no one cares. You get different groups, no one cares. You control. It's, it's a great game. Mm-hmm. Really fast little area control game. It's the ticket to ride of area control games. And I like it a lot. But Should that theme trains, there is then. zero theme there. Should not have been trains. <laughs> so, Royals, my number seven. All right. Number six. I don't make monkeys. All right. So my number six is uh, I'm probably going to get some blowback on this one. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, uh, the theme of this game doesn't even make sense for what it is. Camel Up is the game. <gasps> Camel Up is the game. Camel Up is not thematic in my opinion because what? it Camels doesn't make don't sense. Race. Camels race. Thank you. But Camels so, don't stack upon one another they while don't. racing. They don't. Um, so, I mean, literally it could be anything where you are betting on something to go faster than something else. Uh, it's a racing game, sure, but the camel part of it is unnecessary. Uh Largely, it could be any kind of racing game, any kind of racing thing at all, and it and it would work. Um, the whole stacking, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I told you I was going to get blowback on it, um, but uh, the whole stacking thing doesn't make sense. Camels don't get on top of each other's backs while they're in the middle of a race, uh, so it's just a mechanism uh, to show that one person is going a little bit faster than the other. So I don't know, it just. This one, I like the game, don't get me wrong. And I like everything about the game. I like the bidding. I like the pushing your luck and all this other kind of stuff. But uh, nah. Theme could be whatever you want it to be. Campbell up, my number six. Go ahead. 
No, here's the thing. I think it's the matter. I think the theme is silly, but it's there. Yes, camels shouldn't be able to stack up and climb on each other and move each other, but that's still a theme. It's not like when I play this, I'm thinking, I don't care what the theme is. I'm saying, go camel, go. I mean, you really are getting you don't feel that way in the Royals. Theme. Come on, princess, <laughs> you can do it. Get those blue cubes. <laughs> I don't know actually how that game plays. I don't know. Have I, you never I, played Royals? No. Really? Wow. Yeah. It's short. Mm. You'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never played Royals. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I ain't going to play now. Because you just said that I play short game. Okay, I'm done. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I just, no, I don't, I don't think this, this theme matters at all. I think it's a fine theme, don't get me wrong, but... It does not matter. People and it want to know what, what number of Camel sense. Cup was. Hmm? People want to know what number Camel Cup was. Yeah, oh boy, yeah that's what it should be. You know, I think you're right that it's a that's a good <clears throat> litmus test. I think for this is can you cheer about something and keep it in theme? That's actually not a bad way to think about it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Of, like at no there's point a lot of here, games where stupid stuff happen in them, and I think it's stupid, but. The rest of the theme works. There's a lot of games where I, mean, I like the theme, but there might be a dumb thing. I'm like, that makes no sense, but I don't care because it's a game. It has to be a racing game. It's a racing game, but that's a genre. That's not a theme, right? Yeah. So it could literally be any racing game. But what racing? What kind of race allows you to p- go piggyback and move? Camels don't do that. But what Nothing does? does that, though. Nothing. That's what I'm trying to say. So this it's a thing doesn't world. make any sense. Nothing also like has beams of light scatter swords, but Star Wars does. This is the Star Wars of camels. Oh, oh my just, goodness. Well, that was just, a... There's a movie coming out about Camel Up in 20... Lies. Never. 20 lies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it me, man? My number six is from 2016. This is an Eric Lang game. Watch out. Oh. The Arcane Academy. Master? Oh, you're right. Arcane Academy is about... Uh, let me see if I've got this right. They're all taking a test at wizarding school. <laughs> like their finals, I think is what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, they're, like I guess, being tested to, to cast spells and collect materials and whatever. Um, you basically got that little area there the four by three area in which you're going to be drafting tiles you put them in there and then you activate those areas to get you resources draw more cards play special powers stuff like that yep could be anything and not only could it be anything i wish it was anything else because i don't really like this theme it's kind of lame but it's supposed to be based on a cartoon or a comic book or something which is why it is what it is I don't like it. I didn't know it was actually based on anything. I think I think it is. Don't quote me on that. In fact, don't quote me on anything. You're like actually quoted here. I mean, it's on a video. Oh, just don't like write it out and then put don't. it in quotes and 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 attribute it to me. Don't do that. <laughs> Say it was Tom who said it. But I do enjoy the game a lot. Played this not that long ago. Had a good time with it still. But this is one I. A lot of these have a theme that could be anything. But I don't care. I'm mm-hmm. all right with that, right? This one this, you actually don't like that? This is one I would change. Uh, Biblios I would change, honestly, and this one I would change. I don't know what I would make it. It could be anything. It could be construction themed. It could be whatever, you know, competing construction industry, uh, companies. And you're building stuff. I mean, anything. But this theme is a little generic-y, magic-y stuff, and I don't care for that. So, But I still like the game. So my number six, Arcane Academy. My number six is another game I enjoy quite a bit. Uh, Oh, man. Just give it to him. (laughs) No, no, no. Hang on. Uh, There. It's up there. It's up there. Oh, is it? Oh, Kunki Mono. This is another one of those ones which is very provably themeless since they remade. Probably. (laughs) Probably. You're probably right. (laughs) Probably. <laughs> I'm sorry. How likely are you to be correct? You're probably right. You are thinking that you're probably right. right. Anyway, the game was originally called Heartland. It was about farming. They changed it to samurai soldiers fighting. Farming? Yeah, literally. Blood from there their is enemies. No theming in this game. They uh, even try to make it like, oh, you're like working with some of the armies and moving wicked. them up. Yeah. You know what else isn't in this? Graphic design. <laughs> that looks like wicked boring. 
Oh, no, no, the game is the great game is fun. It's good, man. It's really good. It's really mean. Uh, this one, though, skirts the line where I say you that said, I didn't you pick any games not to pick abstract that games are clearly that abstract. This one is really close to that. But I think Renegade pretends this game has a theme. So does everyone else, but you know. No, 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 no. Like no, I know. No one pretends that chess has a theme. It does have a theme. It does have a theme. It's no, about... No one ever says... the <laughs> Llamas fighting or something was it about? It's about Bart Simpson fighting, apparently. If you got the Bart Simpson set. Yes. But Why would you want a Bart Simpson chess set? Because you like The Simpsons? I think if you like The Simpsons, you ain't playing chess. <laughs> wow. Rude. <laughs> You're probably right. How rude. <laughs> anyway. Right. I think this skirt's a Simpsons little are close. Fine. This is close. Oh, I'm a, I, I agree, but I really love this game. But yeah, there's whatever. It's, it ain't about Samurai's, it ain't about farming. It's a good game, though. So, Gukimino. Gukimono. I can't pronounce any of the names in my list. Gukimono. I'm next time picking chess. Number five. I'm here. <laughs> that was you first. My Every time. My number five. My number five. Um, this one I really enjoy the theme on actually, but it. it but it's not there. It's it, it. It really could be anything, where you're moving from one place to the next. Oh uh, wait, let me think. Uh, it's about. Uh Moving from one place. Shepherding. Tokaido. No. You're moving from one place to the next. You're in a Candy vehicle. Land. And all of the you game of life. are trying to work together to get from point A to point B. Ghost stories. And then Fantasy from point B to point C. No, I mean Final Fantasy. Fantasy. Oh, my goodness. It's Field of, Field of Dreams. <laughs> Celestia. Or the original Cloud Nine. Oh, um, no! This... I, no, boo! No. Nope, 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 nope. I you love this theme. It, oh, like, that's what I'm saying. I don't have a problem with the theme at all. But it could be anything where you're going from one point to the next point to the next point and you're scoring more points. It does not have to be this beautiful artistic depiction of airships and going from yeah, one Yeah, but the whole thing is you're going higher next. and higher and you jump out and get you more points. You don't have to if jump I, If you higher. jump out of a really high air balloon, you everyone knows that's awesome. No. You No. See, that's the thing. It doesn't even have to be in the air. You could be going deeper down into the earth. Oh. Suburbia. Wait, that's already a that's title. <laughs> that would not. Sub Terra? Sub Terra, but that's also that's a title. Also a game. Subterranos. Dirt. Mm. Dirt, Dig the board Doug. game. I mean, I mean, Dig anyway. Dug, the board game. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> uh, it could be literally anything um, where you're going from one point to the next. The, the airship theme, it's great. It looks good. It fits. And I'm not saying that it doesn't, but it could be anything. But it's a great game. It's a very fun game. Uh, it's probably one of my filler go-tos. I'm starting to um, think you made your list that so as you get higher, they're getting more filled with theme. No. All right. Nope, nope, nope. All nope. Right. They're just games that I like. I put them from least like to most like. All okay. right. That's well, then, wonderful. Then, then by very Celestia. nature, they probably have more theme as you go higher because oh, you I, like I, theme. I think you're going to hate my number one, my pick for number one. Oh, you're going to hate it. Oh, I'm ready. Number one will shock you. You shut up, Roy. <laughs> number five for me came out in 2016, and this is a game from um, Bruno Catala, who's my favorite game designer. This game is about the theater. It's called Histrio. Oh, I thought you were going to say Shakespeare, and I was going to get it in that's your face, because that is that's pretty thematic. That's, uh, that's all right. Um, okay, now when you're giving people costumes and stuff, building your scenery, rehearsal, it kind of works yeah. for Shakespeare. In this one... No one's played this all, game, you know. I know. <laughs> it's a gorgeous game, beautifully produced. You are visiting different towns, sending your airships out there, because it's sort of like steampunk meets anthropomorphic animals or whatever and you're all trying to you take cards that represent actors I guess and you're putting on shows for the king now the king either wants a drama or a comedy and depending on the cards that you draft he immediately changes his mind right which is very funny right uh, so you <laughs> might you know hear that he wants he might he might be like right in the middle there and if he wants a, a comedy and suddenly 
you you get one new card and he's like get out of my face with this comedy make me cry and that's what he wants so he flip flops back and forth it's it's thick on there you know and it it even shows a little bit of that sort of extra effort where they go yeah yeah theater yeah yeah but also make everything an animal yeah 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 <laughs> and give them give them mayor ships yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and, and uh, you know make make the uh, make the coins have this on them and do that and extra so they went all extra all over this thing it, it's pretty you know i like it um it's silly it's cartoony but it's it's thick on there you know the the glue still showing on this one so history of no one's played i do like it i would recommend it uh but yeah, you're right. It could, it could have been anything. So my number five pick, Histrio. All right, my number five, as we get farther up this list, by sheer process of elimination, I'm going to know them eventually. And you don't need to cover the screen, gonna, you dork. Gonna, I'm deliberately you're, not looking. You're going to eventually know them after Kenny <laughs> pushes the button. I think this one is very provably without theme, because if I'm right, there's multiple versions of this game in existence. And that's because this game is, yes, I was right, it's Century Spice Road, which they came out with Century Gold Edition. Two different versions yes. of the same game proves no theme. Right? It does. I don't know, I guess. I don't and think so. In this one, you're collecting goods and putting them on trade routes. In the other one, you're collecting stones and using them to buy golems, which will then complete different tasks and help people out. I agree. This was actually my number 11. But do you think a game, just because you can take a theme off and put a different theme on, proves... It has, it's not thematic? It does if it's on my list and helps me. Sure, I get that. <laughs> but I think if two themes are close no, enough. No, it doesn't. For example, Bonobo Beach and whatever the castle building version of right. that game was, the beach one really worked well because you were trying not to be in a spot near people who were jerks on the beach. So that theming worked well, even though there was a castle game. So yes, my point is wrong, but I'm using it right now anyway. Got it. Anyway, I love Century Spice Road, but once I start playing this game, it's grab stuff, turn it in. It's a yeah, know. colored gems or colored cubes kind Who of game. Who cares? And mm -hmm. I like of. Golem Edition better because it's pretty, and I like the pictures of the golems and stuff. But when I play that one, I don't get any more thematic. I'm like, oh yeah. But you better look at the pictures anyway. Though. Right, I you like don't have time like, for it. You're just like da 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 da. I like da, 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 the da. gems better. That's why I like it better. There's also more. So you actually manipulate those. There's more art. In that one too, though, if you do like look at the picture, Century Spice Road has like three pictures. Okay. Maybe not, but there's not many. There's those yeah. ladies bending over, picking mm -hmm. something up in the bull rushes, is on a lot of the cards. Right, right, right. No, that's a good pick. Like I said, my number eleven would have been would have been this. I decided. I don't know actually. I decided it might skirt a little too close to basically be an abstract, you know. But um, no, nah, I don't feel like this one's an abstract game. Well, I mean, I do, obviously, because it's on this list. But I don't think it was meant abstractishly. Man, the words are just flowing today. The words are flowing. You're probably I'm just glad I knew what my number five game was. Probably, probably. Let's continue. Probably. Number four. Hey, how you doing? I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> we are... All right, my number four. Dorks. It feels, right. like, it feels like Friday. <laughs> my number four. It does. This is a, uh, probably would be considered a sacred cow at this point. Definitely a classic. So, um, cows, cows. But the theme. Unexploded cow. Utopia. The theme, no, it has nothing to do with cows. Oh. The theme <laughs> works well. And it is a pictorial theme based upon the city uh, or the region, maybe that it was based upon. Um, but it's a great tile laying game. It's called Carcassonne. Carcassonne could be anything where you're putting together different kinds of things. As a matter of fact, King Domino is very similar to Carcassonne. In, in but some, it's the same theme. Uh, no. You're putting together, you're building a city here. You're, you're building different landscapes in King Domino. Well, it's the same theme. I'm I, mean, kinda, I'm I think a neutral. better example is something like Patchwork. You're right. I agree with you. You're I mean, right. It could be anything. It's like quilting. You know, you're quilting. You're you just know? putting different patterns together. That's all you're doing. It's a pattern building game. It's it is. Now, I think the, the people can be 
Well, no, not really. I was gonna say that people are like thieves and stuff, but they got no, they don't steal anyway. I mean, just, they it, steal my they steal my points when you put one in the same area as me, and then you connect them later on. Yeah, but like that, be, you know, that's not even thematic. They're like, oh, this is a thief. It's, All they thieves do is hang this out is, there. This I mean, is not a thematic game. It looks good, and the theme that they got tied to the region or city that it came from, right. it works. Don't get me wrong. But it, it could be anything that you're putting different patterns together. What about the catapult expansion? That's thematic. <laughs> what about the Star Wars Carcassonne? No, not thematic. Um, it's not. It's, no, Star Wars Carcassonne was all, a, this, one of those anti-themes where they're like, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's like, what's going on? Somebody out there is watching on? this list like, hmm, yes, add Star Wars to that one. <laughs> oh, Camel Up? All right, No, sure. Star Wars. Racing no, Jedi. There is a Star Wars Carcassonne. Yes. Is there a Star Wars Camel Up? Because that's coming. It, it could be pod racing. It could be, actually. And that's then the pod, really like, nice. <laughs> right that's on top. actually really nice. Huh? That actually would work. And then you got Sabulba going backwards, like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, that works. This is kind of a neutral one for me. It's, I don't think the theme is gone, but it's not there either. It's like. It's, it's a it's a it's, not it's a gone, different but it's phase. Not there. I know. Well, it's it's it's. You, know, you don't think this is a good fit for the list? I wouldn't have put it on. Oh, I didn't put it on the list. I think it's a uh, good. I mean, on the one hand, I think it works well as a city building or like city discovery, I guess, because that doesn't even make sense, really, right? You're like building the city chunk by chunk, like road by road. It's more like an exploration. Well, it's, it's game, more. It's not one city either. I think it, it's a the bunch. theme like comes the whole from area, one city, right? but it's. It, it's a whole bunch of different things in the same. And so I, I don't know. I like the game. I like it a lot. It is a classic. It is a sacred cow, whatever you want to call it. But the theme could be any kind of pattern building, pattern building theme that's out there, and it would work just the same. So that's my number four, Carcassonne. All righty. My number four is another Bruno Catala game. One, two, punch. And this, I, I happen to know it had a different theme before they published it. This is a game called Yamatai. Hmm. Yamatai is probably yeah the most the, the prettiest game on my list. I would say is this is Yamatai. the last Bruno Catala game on your list? Yeah. Okay. What else did you think I would pick? I didn't say anything. I was Ranker. asking a serious question. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, Not a leading in one. This one. And the reason it's this versus say like you know five tribes, which is also pretty abstract. You know. It, it, not abstracted, they are, I this guess. This one is less abstract than Five Tribes. You think so? Yeah. But it's... The characters in this are... Don't feel thematic to, like, the power they have at all. Hmm. You know what I mean? And Five Tribes is like, oh, it's they're all genies. It's like, all right, sure, you can do whatever you want if you're a genie. But, like, in this one, the characters don't really do any of that. In this one, this idea of, like, on your turn when you deploy boats, the first one has to be next to a boat of its own color. Why? Why? Like, that's, you know, it's like a ridiculous... There's a few little rules like that throughout it that just kind of let you peek behind the curtain, you know mm. what I mean? At the, the fragility of the whole concept of the theme. Again, I could care less, and I love the, this theme on it, mainly because this game's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous, pretty game. But... It could have been anything, and uh, this used to be actually sort of in, in the family of five tribes. Mm -hmm. And then they, they kind of took that away and, and gave it this, uh, this theme here. But surrounding the islands to build on it with the specific ships, and the, you know, the whole thing just feels like it, they, they could have gone with whatever they'd liked. And as long as it's pretty, you're going to sell it to me, so it doesn't really matter. I want a Will Smith promo for five tribes. Oh. No, you don't. I thought I think it would be funny. Yeah. How? It just would be. It has the power of computer generated <laughs> imagery. <laughs> anyway, my number four pick from 2017 Yamatai. All right, my number four is one of my you favorite. You have to know what they are right now, right? Well, I like it a lot more than Century Spice Road. It's in my top 100. Oh, here we go. Things. Show the picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, space base. That's right. Oh, you love it. Man. Oh man, I love. I really am loving on space base. And this, this really has no theme. I mean, it doesn't. Uh, you roll numbers and pick a spaceship. Doesn't matter. I mean, they even named. They went to the trouble to name every spaceship in this game 
for no reason whatsoever. That's good, though. It's better than not. Sure, but it doesn't mean anything. I'm not like, should have a ooh, restaurant a Star theme. Destroyer came out or whatever it is. If this had a restaurant theme, I think it would be better. What? That customer wants a cupcake when I roll an eight? Mm -hmm. I love this game. I played this game so much. I'm so excited right. to... Right? I'm manage looking money, forward. manage employees or something. And you have like cheeseburger station, your salad bar, and the this and that. Come on, cat. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, give, give me some, man. That's what I'm talking about. Get it on face with your space base. Call it uh, Burger Heaven. <clears throat> burger base. Are you done? Burger base. <laughs> Something done going. Can I talk about you my game? You know what your games are, man. I know what these games are. Have you played this? <laughs> I just played it a couple weeks ago, actually. I played through the, the new expansion, and, and I like that, too. But again... The new expansion even tried to add a theme, like, oh, you're going through a story. Look, Shy Pluto showed up, you know, and... Shy Pluto? Yeah, it's basically Pluto coming in going... Hello. <laughs> no, it's a... It, it's a... It's some base that's nicknamed Shy Pluto or something to that. I, I don't even remember because the theme didn't matter, you know. And, you're, and there was all kinds of... But the, the game itself just worked really well. You roll dice, get these numbers. I love it. I played it a lot. I plan to play it even more. Yeah. Uh, but there's no theme in Space Base. I'm, I mean, I don't in dislike... Space Base, no one can hear you scream. Ice cream. Um, burger Base. But the... <laughs> Where's my super sausage? <laughs> Where's the beef? Space Base, my number four. Number three. My number three. My number three um, has two versions from the same company. The same company has printed this game twice with two different themes on it. Um, uh, and they... I just realized we had no crossover so far. I don't think uh, You're really not going don't. to with me. No, not, not me either. Uh, Star or Hero Realms is, is my number three because, quite frankly, they are the same game with different themes wrapped yeah, around them. I feel, like, I feel like we've reached some sort of psychological... He's, it, it, this is great. We're with you all the way. What? The same game, he said it. Well, yeah, it is. I don't think I've ever said that they aren't. Have I? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good night. What in the world? <laughs> We're just being dorks. <laughs> they are the same game. I <laughs> like Hero Realms a smidge better just because of the... I like the fantasy theme a smidge better. Um, but Star Realms was the original, and I really enjoyed that before Hero Realms came along. Um, now, the thing that really grabbed me with Hero Realms is that they, they kind of launched the game with the character packs. Right, right. And that was like, ooh, this is really cool. I like this better. Now they have the character packs for Star Realms with the sci-fi theme wrapped around them. So uh, it's largely the same. It, it's the same game. So, I mean, but I really enjoy both of them. Great game, Star Realms or Hero Realms. My number three. You now these these two are like the obvious choices for when you just need a theme, but it doesn't matter. Which is like space, or I guess sci-fi, sci and fantasy. Mm -hmm. If they did this again, what would be the theme? Like, what's the third one in that race? Post-apocalyptic. That's not sci-fi. I guess not. Well, I mean, it. it oh, I don't want to go down that, down that, down that. No, but I'm saying like it's always like oh, space or future, you know, whatever, space stations or or on Earth, sci-fi buildings. After this, and stuff. IPs. But I guess <laughs> pre the uh, Disney Disney realms. Disney realms. Dinosaurs. Dude, I would buy Disney realms like yes. it's going out of style. Dinosaurs, oh. different dinosaurs. Um, like prehistoric yeah. is probably it, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, someone said World War Two. Oh, zombies, of course. Someone said <laughs> zombie oh. realms. That's fantasy. No! I consider that fantasy, though. All right, my number three is a game uh, with a sci-fi theme. And, and if they wanted to, they sure could put out the fantasy theme next because it's that very same thing. It's called Sentient. Sentient. I still have not played this game. Uh, you see that picture on the cover? That's a pretty yeah. awesome picture. That is picture. more theme than the rest of the game put together. And then you have dice. These dice are not rolled. You just roll them one time to set up the game. And then you are buying or drafting or whatever cards. You put them in front of you. They manipulate the dice. They You score sets as you are going. The cards have qualifiers that you're trying to meet with these dice that uh, are, are on the outside of the cards. It's sort of a lot of gears within gears. That's what I like about it. It's a really puzzling game. It's a very engaging game. Mm -hmm. It's punchy. It's quick. But 
this one, I almost would rather they just be like, <laughs> just kidding. The cards are just a solid color and you just pretend there's a theme, you know. It's like it could be it could be anything. There's no special powers on anything. You are collecting sets. You score on bionics or whatever. I'm making that one up, but I forget what they are. You get bionic bonuses, so you get bionic cards and they multiply <laughs> at the end of the game, but it doesn't matter. It could be anything. It could be like blue cards times blue tokens. <laughs> so yeah, I knew this was going to be on the list for sure also. I don't know. I just, I do, I almost do wish it was something else. Because it feels, and I actually the only reason I think I, I would rather it be something else is because this theme sounds cool. But it sounds like, it's kind of like a movie I'm not allowed to watch. I saw the trailer, but I can't go in, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, what's going on in there? Oh, okay, I'll just stay out here then and just watch the trailer again. That's kind of how that feels to me. So Sentient, my number three from 2017. Uh, the chat has pointed out that Cthulhu Realms actually exists. I forgot because that wasn't made that's by them. That was made by Tasty Minstrel, I think. Yeah, did it? No, like that's, uh, yeah. gosh, Tasty Minstrel, was it? I don't remember. It just had really difficult Maybe to understand iconography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I had a hard time with that one, I remember. <laughs> really hard. So, yeah, so I guess there is three of them out there. I guess Cthulhu would be next then. All right, my number three is a game that we've been talking about a lot recently, and I think that you guys would agree with me very strongly that it has no theme. My number three Kaka is... Alarm. <laughs> Kaka Alarm. <laughs> Dominion. Dominion, of course, we pointed out that this has no theme. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I know some people sit there and say there's theme. I have never, in, in all the times i played Dominion, which has been a lot, had someone been like... Here comes the the brigade, you know. The here comes like the moat. You I mean, can't hit me with your thief because I have a moat, you know. You can't there is handle like, the moat. They, I mean, they, they did enough to name like the mean cards mean stuff, like the witch. Oh, know? they put a little bit of effort into it, yes. And the, the witch cast a curse. Really, the rest doesn't really matter, yes. Yeah, and I know this one is argued by some people um, who I just assume don't get a lot of games with theme. Because Dominion or care. doesn't That's have okay, any. you know. And if this is thematic for you, then that's good. You You're are more wrong. perceptive than I am. <laughs> okay, what he said is it was worse than me. I Clearly, said you are more perceptive than me. I don't. That means you're you're you you're better at picking up on theme because I don't see it. It's not there, is what he means. No, yeah. no, that's not what I meant. My I, thing was I spun it to psych him out, as though it sounded like a positive thing. Of course, they're wrong, you know. <laughs> There's no theme in that. You're crazy if you think so. But the way I said it implied I respect you. Now, he tried to add theme as the sets went on. Like, hey, Nocturne, there's vampires and stuff. And you know what? There was no theme there either. You know, the... Vampires? Oh, and that Nocturne theme, it was kind of like, oh, there's... There were vampires in that one? I think. I oh, can't I'm remember. All over that now. No, you were not. It's oh. garbage, the theme part of it. Look, I like Dominion a lot, but pff, whatever. I'm still waiting and, on Space In the latest Dominion set, you get stuff. villagers. What I'm... They're cubes, and they give you extra actions that you can save to later. How's that a village? What does that even mean? What I'm pulling from this is that Tom Basil said that Dominion is garbage. Oh, well, that's your extrapolation. I could that's probably right. take a lot of things you say and cut them up. I would and never, though. People do. I would never twist your words against right. you. Right. All right. Dominion, my number three. <laughs> Number two. In chat. <laughs> this is the yeah. You guys are massive dorks. Do it at will. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Holier than I. I would never. Pawn command. By your command. All right, my number two. My number two is uh, has great custom dice, beautiful dice. Um, and Sounds you are dramatic. basically rolling those dice to try to get symbols that match the kind of castle that you're going to try to conquer. And as long as you can oh. roll the same kind of symbols as are needed on that castle, then you can take that castle. Once you get a whole set, you can flip them over and nobody can steal them from you. Age of War is uh, a game that I really, 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 really enjoy. I uh, enjoyed it a lot. But the theme? Yeah. I agree on this one very Whatever much. Whatever you so. want it to it's be. Just to be risk. Right, it was risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, and before that, Monopoly. No. 
No. Before Monopoly, it was the landlord's game. Before the landlord's game, it now, was... Now, don't get me wrong. I think Yahtzee. that the theme works well with it. It provides for n neat illustrations on the cards. The dice, like I said, are amazingly well illustrated. They're etched in. They're not printed or heat stuck or whatever you call it. Heat stuff. Transfer, heat transfer, I think. Heat transfers. They're none of that. They're, they're not really, garbage. They're really, they're really quality dice. And uh, the cards are not that high quality, but they work. Okay. Um, of course. But always. my number two, Age of War. Mm. It's your turn. Hmm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, my number two game is from 2018. This is very new. And it is kind of, I kind of did on this one what you did at the beginning of the list, where this is sort of a catch-all for uh, okay, a lot of these kind of Euro games that could be anything. And in fact, I'm kind of thinking of Stefan Feld games here. They are all sort of really interchangeable. This is Carpe Diem. Stefan Feld is the king of Carpe Diem. Diem. You, you take that back. Carpe Diem is just sort of the latest uh, culprit of doing this. I'm actually not sure what the theme is. It's obviously a guy buying fish from a lady who is obviously selling him a bad fish because she is pretty pleased with herself. So there. is that like a pun? Is that like a carp? <laughs> no. Sam. So it's like carp no, day? No. <laughs> oh, no, that would be great, though. That's fantastic. <laughs> no, fish is just one of the things in the game. There's also grapes, okay. and you're building up your your farm or something. So I guess you have to seize a day and build it up quickly while you're moving your dude around geometric shapes and gathering new things to build. Um and it could also have been like it's basically like that octopus game he put out where you build a that station underneath aqua the sphere aqua garbage yeah that one that game sucked garbage. i really hate aqua it also. Kaka. aqua aqua kaka sounds like a good i would buy that game aqua kaka is like a good <laughs> name for like a bidet a fancy bidet aqua kaka Brought to you by. <laughs> no, come on, no, no it's awful. <laughs> no, no, you ruined it. Never mind. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. So anyway, Carpe Diem, like Notre Dame, like all of these other games from Stefan Feld, you could swap the themes around and it wouldn't matter. Aqua Caca. And right. if you think that Trajan is thematic, brought to you by X All right. You're my number wrong. two is thematically one of my favorite themes, but the theme isn't there at all. It's a space theme. Uh, when we first saw it, I was like, oh, it looks really spacey, but it's not. It's just a Euro game. These two both hate it, but I like it a lot. Heaven's and that is Pulsar 2849. I don't oh, hate this game. Gosh. I hate it enough for both of us. He hates it. Oh, okay. I don't oh, you thought it was okay? It. I, I like it. Yeah, yeah oh. well, I really oh. like this game because you're rolling dice and using those dice to do various actions, and you're opening up Pulsars, I guess. You're just flipping tiles and getting points in various so ways. Rough. Well, Z is wrong. This game is amazing. No, no, I'm right. You're wrong, Colonel Z. <laughs> Mama's right. <laughs> this game was anyway. so... I'm, this is abstract. I'm sorry. This is abstract. This breaks your rule. No, no. way. No. No, 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 no. no, come on now. This is like the Aqua Caca of space games. Brought to you by x Legs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this felt abstract. You sure what's in no, there? No, I know. That's the point of this list. No, Yes, I know it felt abstract. Too abstract. Oh. That's the... Okay, what What about it would you say warrants any theme? The fact... I mean, what, what they about tried to like explain was you are opening up pulsars and getting these things running around to different planets and you're flying your spaceship around and colonizing planets. That's thematic. No, there's no way this is a pure abstract, but it feels very abstract. It could be about camels racing. Again, that's the point of this list. I have to open up the... No, it doesn't work. No? This game is amazing, though. I really love it. That's crazy. Huh? Also, <laughs> if you notice, I said the name of it before it showed up on screen. Yeah, you're down. Well, come on, man. That's a 50-50. <laughs> you get better. Do you know what your one is now? I do know what my one All right, is. good. Here we All go. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> And finally, number one. All right, here we go. My number one is the one that I'm thinking I'm going to get you a lot of hate on. But I need to catch, I need to explain myself. Mm -hmm. um, you got some explaining to do. By virtue of the fact that this game has multiple modules, each with a different theme on them, 
means to me that this is a non-thematic game and you could wrap any theme around it that you could possibly want. 504. Time stories. Time stories is correct. Okay. No I, way. No. Oh, goodness No, me. I'm sorry. It's had zombies. <laughs> it's had pirates. It's had, uh, like, Vikings or medieval or whatever. The line, baby. It's had, it's had, uh, what do you, what do you call? Just, it's had every single theme imaginable. I enjoy the game. But the theme that you guys are thinking is, makes it so thematic is just a mechanism. It is not actually a theme. All the different themes of the modules are what make this game thematic from module you to You realize module. if I was making a list of my top 10 thematic games, Time Stories would be on the list. I wouldn't put it on that list. Because it might even it be has, like number one. It has, it has multiple themes slapped onto it with every single module. Yeah. No. Well, the no, I mean, the, the, the theme the, of the game is about changing themes. Oh, yeah, I mean, I get what he's saying. You're traveling from location to location, but it's shock full of story and things and events. And story? Okay, yeah, I guess, but that, oh, that's man. not necessarily theme, though. I, I disagree with this. <laughs> <laughs> we, the, the opinions of the, the, opinions of the dice hour do not <laughs> reflect. I don't Let's care that you answer. disagree. I, 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 felt, I, I told you right off the bat that people are going to disagree with me, but from my opinion, from my looking at this game, you could literally play this game with any theme and it will feel the same. Because that's what you do! Wait, are you saying like when we played the Marilyn Manson one or whatever that one was, that felt the same as Prophecy of Dragons? Generally speaking, yes, because you're just rolling dice and hoping to get a, 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 an outcome. Now, now that's look, a dangerous path to tread. I you go down that path, every I game is no, no you theming. Can. I every know game is no can. theme. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can. That's why when <laughs> I find a game, you could literally say that about almost any game. You are correct. But when I find a game that has themes and mechanisms that are joined together in such a way that they really feed Hang each on, other. I would like to point out, I hate Bob. <laughs> yes. Oh, Continue. Bob. We all hate Bob. <laughs> we all hate Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but you, uh, you, I, I just, this shot to the top of the list because it literally has multiple themes wrapped around it. Yes, there is an overarching theme, a storyline, but... That's different than theme, in my opinion. That's that. My number one, Time Stories. Hmm? I, I don't even know how to respond to that one. I, 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 what, do the, what do the folks in the interweb say? They this is the most comments disagree. I've ever seen. Scroll by the <laughs> screen. <laughs> <laughs> this person oh, said man. Time Stories equals chess. So some pe and some people have said that they agree with you. There you go, baby. Most do not. <laughs> well, most people are wrong. Whoop. All right, my number one is a. Uh, my there's, number there's one. There's no way you can top this. Oh no, yeah, right. Just say whatever you want. My number now. one is technically from 2018, but it's a reprint of a 2008 game with a new theme, and the new theme was ridiculous. This is Pyramid of Penguin, which is a game Ooh. that had a mummy theme with the penguins from Ice Cool slapped onto it. Sure. Because Ice Cool is Ice selling. Cool did well. And it is just beyond goofy. Is that the two versions of the game? Side yeah, the side? other one over there, I did a, I did a comparison video. Uh, the other one has, again, mummies moving around a tomb. You're running in, stealing artifacts. Like, you know, mummy theme. Like any old mummy theme you can think of. The stuff that immediately comes to mind. Yeah. And the other one they discover a pyramid below the high school and go down there and some queen penguin or something is it's still a theme dude it's a garbage theme that's not the list though it's it feels like it could have like they they slapped a garbage theme on there my kids thought it was thematic you're just not a kid you've you're grown up you're not allowed at toys r us anymore thank also, you captain obvious they're out of business <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my number one pick, Pyramid of Ping Crap. You know, so I, I was going to say something. Someone in the chat said it, too. The fact that you hate Bob proves there's a theme in the first game. Ooh. Whatever. Okay, I hate, dice hate me. So that proves you have a theme. You're thematic, Sam. No, I'm not thematic. 
All right, well, my number one's going to be like not gonna a say boring that was, letdown after all I'm, this stuff. I'm not going to say that that was a bad argument, but I'm just not going to say that. <laughs> all right. Go, you're number one. <laughs> my number Magic one is... Magic the Gathering. Nah. <laughs> Blood Rage. <laughs> Could have been camels. Go. <laughs> Now, my number one is just another Euro game, but it's, I, I put these in order of my favorites, and this is currently my favorite of all the games on this list, and that is Lorenzo Il Magnifico, in which you are doing something. I don't know what. I think you're building something. You're, you're making victory points, I bet. Yeah, you are definitely getting victory points. I have no idea what else is going on in this game. It's, I mean, you're buying cards, and you're building a row of purple cards, and yellow cards, and green cards, and you're trading resources to get points, and you have a military, and you're trying to not tick off the Pope, or something like that. That's thematic. Sure, uh, I guess. Uh, none of this makes any sense thematically to me at all, but I love the game. It all comes together in a really strong way, mechanism, mechanism why. But like, you put all these green things down, and then you just run that, and it just goes off, this goes off. What, what did I do there? You're getting better at living life. And also avoiding upsetting the Pope. You know nothing about this game. And you're I don't have to, though, do I? Because it's basically every other Euro game. Becoming more magnificent. Well, that's the thing, though. There's a lot of these. <laughs> that's it, right. You're, like, just uh, pushing your glory. Or, that cover uh, is magnificent. Top ten covers. <laughs> oh, yeah, that covers where it's at. All right, that's my favorite of the top ten games that are themeless or pasted on themes. So, Aquahaka themes. What games did we not put on? Uh, again, I love the game. Goodness. All right. What game? What games did we not put on that you thought we would? And we'll tell you why or why we didn't put them on. Um, oh, I'm ready to hate. I'll it. answer one that was mentioned. I think someone said Vindication. I think Vindication has theme in it. That's why. You're wrong. And Sam doesn't like it, so that's why neither one of us it. put it on the I've list. Never played it. So. Uh, Splendor. Don't like it. I like it, but yeah, not Splendor as much as I like Century. Would be, pick, would be a pick, yeah. If I had to make this list, eight hundred games, that would be a pick. Joe paid five dollars to say Sam and Z need a timeout for their number one picks. <laughs> we do. What was your number one? Hey, if, a pyramid of if, ping. If that gets us five bucks, no, Sam, you can pick that all day long. I mean, that that's um, no, that penguin game is. What about? Uh, I mean, the two games looked exactly similar, just different colors. But one of them makes sense, a theme, and then the I other guess. one that went crazy just because they need to sell it. All right, I now, guess. there's a, there's a lot of trolling in here, so, okay. But I'm going to ignore the trolling answers. Lords of Waterdeep? I think it could be anything. Sure, it could be anything, but I thought the theme was there. But Whether it's about, you could switch it's it over. about, again, if you kind of take a step back, it's about completing orders by gathering goods. So it's going to be a game about, you know, yeah, you could take it out of D&D &D and put it in a Magic the Gathering setting. A restaurant. But it kind of feels like what you're doing a works. A chain of restaurants. You know, it's not like in Targi. It's like lines and columns. And that one's, you know, it's really out there. Someone says Cryptid. Well, a lot of people say Cryptid, actually. I, I thought about it, but I, I didn't put it on the list because I, I would say it's abstract. Yeah, I, I would have. <laughs> cryptid doesn't even pretend. Like, the box cover, once the box cover's there, they're like, there's a theme. Okay, anyway, so what you're doing... <laughs> I mean, you like, are looking for a monster. I thought about it, but the one of the uh, criteria for the list was not, tr not, you know, clearly abstract games with a theme pasted on. Cryptid was out for me. Otter says, Time Stories lacks theme in the same way as Jason only owns one game. <laughs> okay. Wow. Fine. It's also a bad argument. Uh, Samurai. Uh, Samurai from Reiner Knizia. Sure, That yeah. would I consider to be just, and that, and Tigers and Euphrates, they both to me feel like straight up abstract games. Samurai, 100% yeah. sure. Sure. There's no pretending with that one. You're just putting numbers on a board, surrounding things, and winning Are there cards tokens. in that game? Because I know in Through uh, the Desert, it is abstract, like completely no hidden information whatsoever. Yeah. Right, I think. Because I think the water tokens are revealed, right? It's been a while. But it's like straight abstract game. Concordia is one I considered just to make my top ten. It's been too long since I played it, so I don't know. But I remember thinking it was pretty interesting. I mean, yeah, again, it's one of those sort of medieval themes. You can move this way and that. But it worked for me, from what I recall. Um, Heaven and Ale. 
Never played it. <laughs> heaven Hell has no theme. No. <laughs> You're moving around. There's it no has, heaven, first of all. It has, okay. a, yeah. Well, I don't even yeah. remember the ale being well, it's in the, the game. It's from the guy who made a zoo. No, Come are, on, you know. It's a bunch of monks that are making different kinds of liquor from different kinds of Yeah, ingredients. but you like taking these people and putting them on a grid and they get points. Yeah. And they, it's... But I just didn't. I, I like it okay. I just didn't like it enough to put it on, on this list because mm -hmm. I was picking games I like too. Mm -hmm. Dixit. For too, you, they said. Well, abstract. it's uh, party games don't it's really. Abstract. Party games aren't abstract or not abstract. They're like their own thing. It has no theme. What is the theme in Dixit? You t you explain to me what the theme is in Dixit, and I'll tell you why I didn't put it on the list because there's no theme. Museum curators looking. No. <laughs> Museum curator wants a piece of art. I believe you. But he are. doesn't want to be very clear what kind of art no, he wants. No, no, there is no theme in that game. They don't pretend there is one. There's also some people are mentioning Azul, straight abstract. It's abstract. Doesn't even pretend to be it. Uh, let's see. Bunny Kingdom? Bunny Kingdom's a good pick. I just don't like it. But that would be a great pick. Oh, I didn't realize you didn't like Bunny Kingdom. I thought you just didn't like the board and how small it was. Well, that's part of what, well, yeah, I don't like it. Well, they made the board bigger. I haven't played that. When I played, I didn't like it. But I would say that's a great pick. For yeah, Bunny those Kingdom's of you that a good like it. Bunny Kingdom's like a good choice, I think. Theme. Again, I think any theme where they try to compensate by adding animals that are anthropomorphic in there, they're trying a little hard. That always seems to be the case. I compensate. I don't for agree on that. You know I mean? I, I, for a bad theme, a stuck on theme. No, I don't know. Buddy Kingdom seems okay to me. I mean, I. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I don't mind the bunnies. I don't think it's super thematic, but I don't mind that there's bunnies in it. No, oh, no, I don't care that they are bunnies. I'm just saying it hints to the idea that their theme isn't that strong. That's what I mean. Sh Some people are saying Shadows Over Camelot. What do you think about that one? Uh, I thought about putting that on my list. Because I'm poker, literally, you're, you're, you're going around to these different places trying to get the best poker hand. I would not put on my I list because I agree about theme. the poker part, but I think that the, the shadows of the Camelot theme still comes through in different ways. You're crazy. Whether it's the Holy Grail, the search for the Holy Grail, or whether it's the who is the hidden traitor, which is kind of thematic, like who's betraying us or fighting the catapults. It's not, yes, there's the poker hand thing, but I still think the shadows of the Camelot theme works for it. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't. disagree. I disagree, but it, it's it's mainly because I when I do play the game, it still feels like a thematic experience, but it's not because of the game. It's because the people that are playing the game are cracking cracking wise with you know, uh, oh, Monty oh, Python oh. jokes and that type of stuff. It, it has nothing to do with the actual. No, theme I agree. Of the game. That game's not. Some people are saying wingspan. I wanted it to be about bats. I was deceived. <laughs> Merlin. Some people said Merlin is actually a good pick. Yeah, I like Merlin, but yeah, that game, you're just moving stuff around in a circle and yeah, collecting yeah, yeah, flags right. and tiles, and yeah, that's not a bad pick. I think Merlin's a good one. However, no one has yet picked one where I've gone, oh, I should have put that on my list. So I'm feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, good right. job, man. Dragon <laughs> Farkle? That game's not good enough to make the list. Oh, my goodness. Dice Town? No. No. Because the poker hands add some theme to the game. I agree. And you're like getting gold nuggets There's a lot. and All stealing the land. Like you're, you're, you're taking land from the town. You are going to the saloon. If you go to the saloon, you get, st you know, you like will steal from other people. So if you run the saloon, you buy things at the market. And so you acquire new cars. It's, it's full of theme. I actually, thought about, that I actually thought about um, Bang the Dice game before I thought about Dice Town. Sure. Someone at the beginning said, I wait to see how Sam's going to shoehorn Bang the Dice game no, on this no, no, list. No, no. no, because, and the reason is because I've played another version, thematic version of Bang the Dice game. It was a uh, Walking Dead themed, and it just did not feel thematic at all. It just felt mechanical. So mm. the Western theme on Bang the Dice game really makes that game work. Okay. I want to hear arguments against Raptor and Race for the Galaxy. You know, Race for the Galaxy was the first game I thought of for me. I was like, oh, yeah, Race for the Galaxy. And I was like, no, you know what? The technology parts of it make sense to me. I use this technology to get space marines that give me plus two to military to take over these planets. 
It is abstracted down for me, Race for the Galaxy, but there is theme there. And if I found some theme in the game that I could identify with, I eliminate from my list. That's all. Sure. I thought Raptor was going to be on his list. I thought about it because I thought you really got into the theme of Raptor. I do. That's why it's not on my, my list. list. He's saying my list. Um, I thought about it, no. but you know, the theme like really Sam's, like work. like Tom saying, the stuff you do in it gives me. See, for me, the way I think about what you're saying is, if I get like sort of cinematic moments in my head, I'm like, I'm getting into it. Yeah. And that one, there's that fire and stuff. Yeah. In Raptor, you know, you're like, got the, you know, the bushes, <laughs> kind of like the Raptor through the bushes thing, and all yeah. the signs are like, okay, let's back up, the, throw fire. It works. It so, was designed as a mechanical. Lord of the Rings game, though. Yeah, you got a Hobbit run through, you throw fire. <laughs> it works. It's the same Alrighty. thing. Well, we got to end here because we got other stuff to get done here. Thank you guys for coming in and watching us live. If you're watching this later on, of course, leave comments below. Tell us what games you think have the biggest pace and on theme. And, and again, if you're watching this later on, once again, we want to clarify that we deliberately left games that were clearly abstracts off the list. So if Hive isn't on the list, it's because Hive is an abstract strategy game. You know. Sure. So Now, where does that line lay? Obviously, for different ones of us. Some that was stuff. like not an English sentence. <laughs> that was, he I, lost he's, it. Well, like, yes. So, uh, it, Ch 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 you know? the doctor as Chabar. soon as, as, soon as this Tom is oh, I'm, gonna str I'm taking you through the doctor. That was We're a on lot camera of live so much that the chance of everything bad happening to us on camera is going to happen. High, it's high. Day. People aren't going to watch anymore. They'll be like, it's I'm horrible. too worried. But we'll get a lot of views probably. Oh my goodness. Let the camera roll! I'm so morbid. <laughs> morbid, baby, morbid. That's All a right. great way to end this one. All right, so anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll be back. No, they'll be back tomorrow. Correct. Um, you're out of here, man. We got to get I'm you checked in. I'm heading to LA, in. so if you're in LA, maybe I'll see you there. Um, but they're going to be doing back talk without me. Keep them straight for me, folks. Um, until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for hanging out. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. Cool.